boys and girls, I'm Olli Hutturen and welcome again to this uh, another process video. Lately I've been inspired by space and this old method of visual effects that in old sci-fi movies like 2001 Space Odyssey had and how they built these large matte paintings to the space station's background to represent a space scene for the movie. In fact, some time ago I already made a one video where I explored these same possibilities of how space scenes could be built inside Twin Motion. At that time, I think it was the version 2021, the possibilities of the applications were still quite limited and uh, building a um, custom star map background had to be done rather awkwardly. But now, with this new version, when we have a few possibilities to upload real HDR images to the background, I decided to revisit this topic again. So let's go and see what I have achieved with this. Let's start from the scratch. As we know, Twin Motion is by default made for things that are meant to be visualized on the surface of the Earth. Therefore, we must first remove and hide all those elements that prevent us from rising high into space. First, we remove this large ground plane, and after that we go here to location settings and from there to backgrounds. Here we can select the none option and we'll immediately see that the skyline disappears. Next, uh, let's move to the lighting section and start processing from there these environment settings. Select Skylight HDRI and the basic cloud in sky will be displayed. Let's go on to the refine these settings from this more button. Well, from here we can now open the new space themed HDR background images, which I have rendered and made for this tutorial. And when it's loaded, we get this great view of the globe, but it is only partly visible. We can get rid of these gray layers when we turn off the smog setting. But as we can see here at the bottom of the picture, a kind of a fog layer is still visible. This is very strange haze layer which doesn't seem to have any kind of a pattern in anywhere to turn it off. The only trick I have found to get rid of it is to use the path tracer renderer. But I want to use Twinmotion own real-time graphics. So actually the only way to remove this fog layer is to rise up high enough. If you have an idea how to turn off this particular fog level, please leave your tip into the comments below. Well, anyway, now we are up here in the Earth orbit and of course now we need some space related stuff in here. Since we now have the opportunity to use the Sketchfab model libraries in the newest version of the Twin Motion, what would be a better place to get, for example, some sort of a space shuttle to here? Let's try NASA as a search term in here and see what all kind of models the Sketchfab can offer. For example, here a model from legendary Discovery Space Orbiter. Let's take that into the processing and move it over here to the scene. As soon as it shows up in the field, we notice that it will place itself again somewhere near the ground plane where this smog layer still remains. One neat trick is to set the height position directly numerically. It happens here from the additional menu where we can select the transform listing. From here, when we set the C value of the shuttle to say 50,000 units, we will certainly rise to the height where this annoying fog layer is no longer a problem. After the transfer, we can press the hotkey F to quickly move to the same level as the shuttle is. Next, we can start to play with the camera. But first, let's create one image from the media section 
From here we can get the access to the camera settings and we can start to adjust a proper focal length. In order to get a suitable aspect with the background and the object in the foreground, I recommend using a tighter crop for the lens, such as 35mm. And because we are in space, I like to raise these lens flare settings to very high, so that we can receive some good flares from the brightest parts of the model, where the light hits and creates a hot spot. The lens flare can be further emphasized if we process the surface material of this shuttle and set the reflection values very high. For example, if we activate the metalness option of its material, we will get very reflecting surfaces and the light will bounce with the bigger flare from the space shuttle cover. Another great setting here is the vignetting. It can be also set up quite high, because it darkens the edges of the view and makes the background image more subtle. It is a good idea to turn the model and see in which angle we can get the most interesting view and how the materials are blending and shaded with this background HDR image. One thing we should understand about the space themed background HDR images that I have made is that they don't behave the same way as pictures which are taken on the surface of the Earth. For example, when we look at the direction of the light here, it illuminates this subtle model very sharply from this left side and leaves the right side in the darkness. This is because the basic settings in Twin Motion is that when we use HDR background images, the position of the sun is always placed in the brightest part of the background image. That's why the model doesn't really look that realistic and many things remain in the darkness as if there was no other light source in the space. If you look how the Earth is illuminated, in this position, and when we start to rotate the view, in reality the sun should be located somewhere in here. But the sun is not there, because I've deliberately left it out from the background image when I render it in another program. It is because we have more possibilities to adjust the direction of the light, as long as we first release it from its automatic placement. This happens behind the light settings from the place where we can handle the HDR image settings more. Here we find the match sun setting. When we turn it off, the position of the sun jumps back to the dynamic sky settings and we can now freely change the position of the sun from here in the location settings. By turning the time of day and north offset settings, we find a better angle for the direction of the light and the shadows on the surface of the shuttle start to settle in a better place. This actually now reveals to us how HDR backgrounds and Twin Motion's dynamic sky are implemented. The dynamic sky is behind everything and the HDR background is just drawn in front of it. This can be verified best when we start playing with the reflections. For example, here I have dragged this astronaut model from Sketchfab in the Earth's orbit. And when I also tweak this material of this model in highly reflective mode, now when we look closer at the visor of this helmet, we notice that the sun position is revealed. This is the sun from the dynamic sky. Even if you cannot see it in here in the HDR background, it is not hidden in the reflection. Anyway, this is an interesting place to play a little more with the reflection. I will add a model of the ISS, the International Space Station, around the astronaut. And when we now look closer, we notice that the station is not reflected from the helmet. At this point we can use the reflection probes. 
They can be found here behind the tools menu and since this helmet is mainly round shaped, this sphere reflection probe is the most functional for this purpose. I'll drag it in here. With the brightness dial I can adjust how bright the reflection is and with the size setting we can increase or decrease the reflection size. Now if we again play with the time of the day setting we can very well see how the dynamic sky's sun travels on the reflection and when we go under the lighting setting and set more of the sun itself we can even set the size of the sun. One thing about this reflection probe is also to realize that they need to be updated separately so that the image in them becomes in a correct stage. This thing happens only in the viewport. Fortunately, when we render animation from this, it will update automatically in each frame of the video. In here, the reflection is also quite blurry. From the preferences settings we can rise the resolution of the reflection to higher values. But in any case, when we do these kind of a space scenes, it would be sweet if we could use the sun to produce the right kind of a glow and the lens flare. If we switch to the dynamic sky side, we can see the sun nicely, but we will lose all the stars and this blue horizon plane takes the rest of our space. So one gimmick is to fake the sun. For example, I can drag this sphere from these primitive objects into space and I can tweak its material properties. When I rise its glow value, it starts to shine brightly and creates a glowing object that emits light. And when I scale it up, it shines even brighter. Now this fake sun needs to be placed somewhere far away, roughly in the same position where the dynamic sky's sun would be. It is not a perfect solution, but it can be act as a sun substitute and still give some sort of a lens flare to our space. Now that we have this satellite model in here, I'd like to show how we can improve and add some features to it. This model is also from Sketchfab and by default its materials look kind of a flat and plain. For example, we could add a little details to the surface of its solar panels. We could change the material to something interesting that can be found directly in Twinmotion's own material library. Here under the metals I have found this aluminium planes material. But when we drag it over the solar panels we can see that it won't sit there in very properly. So, we should change this UV wrapping method to cubic UVs. Now when we try this material again, it drops in the place a bit better. We just need to rise the reflection value again on very high. And now we can see that there are these tiles that can represent the solar plane texture and bring the grid kind of a detail to it. Under the scale setting we can rotate the texture so that the grid is parallel to the solar panel. As you may have seen from some photos, the bodies of the real satellites are often wrapped in some kind of a foil material. This cold foil material looks great for the body if we just scale the texture a bit so that we really see those wrinkles on the foil. Yeah, it starts to look quite interesting now. On the sides that will be in the darkness, we could add a few small blinking lights. This can be done with the same method that I used in the fake sun earlier. We just add these half sphere primitives on this satellite 
and scale them down. When we type a search term blink in the search field, we can find these neon sharp blink materials from the library. I just drag these over the hull sphere in here. I'm not even sure does the satellites have these lights on them, but they certainly look cool, so we should add more of them. I change a color of this light to red and I create a duplicate of it. And here in the dialog I change the settings from instance to copy. This way any changes I will make to this light it remains independent and won't affect the object where it was copied. Now I choose its material and change the color to blue. I also want to change how fast the blinking is happening, so I go inside the scale settings. Here I go in the speed settings and I change the speed value of Y axis to 1. And now the blue light blinks only once in the second. In this way we can now decorate the whole satellite and add some additional light and details so that it will look good and interesting for our space scene. And finally, a few more words about animation and how to create the illusion of this forward gliding satellite. Object actually remains in the place, we just simply move the camera position. In fact, it is the same method and trick which they used in the old sci-fi movies like Star Wars and before that especially in the 2001 Space Odyssey. We just follow the object and move the camera to separate directions and eventually it looks like the satellite is traveling on its orbit. Okay, I hope that this was inspiring and perhaps you learned something new from Twinmotion. If you are interested, I have a complete ready-made collection of these space-themed pictures in Gumroad. I have produced this 10 HDR background image series in 8K resolution and it covers different kind of scenes from Earth's orbit. I'll put the link in the description and of course if you just want to try this uh, I have also made a, one separate space background which you can download for free. I hope you like it and uh, if you decide to get that package I, I really appreciate it. Anyway, remember to subscribe to this channel and I'll see you again in the future. Bye bye.